you guys are watching this video, it's probably because you guys got accepted into medical school. And so for that, totally congratulations because getting into medical school is not easy. But not all of you guys are watching this because you got into medical school. Maybe you're still working on your pre-med and that's okay as well. But for those of you who are planning on going to medical school or maybe just got accepted, you guys have been working for this for at least the past three or four years. And you know, you guys have been doing everything from getting good grades to doing extracurricular activities to taking the dreaded MCAT. And it's all been building up to this medical school acceptance. But now you guys are probably thinking, oh crap, like I've been preparing for medical school my, you know, maybe my entire life, but at least for the last four years. But what really entails going to medical school? Is it really as hard as people say it is? Am I gonna have free time to do other things? How much am I really gonna have to study in medical school? So these are some of the questions you guys are probably asking yourselves. You're probably trying to reach out to other medical students online or maybe some people that you know that are in medical school or that have gone to medical school. And so in this video, I want to just answer some of the more commonly asked questions for people that are preparing to enter medical school. And so if this is the first time we're meeting, my name is Michael, I'm a first year medical student. I'm almost a second year medical student. So depending on when you guys watch this, I potentially could be a second year medical student, and I'm super excited to answer some of these questions that are weighing on your guys' minds. So let's start off with the first and most commonly asked question, how hard is medical school? So in my opinion, medical school is a full-time job. So if you think you're going to be able to work a part-time job while you're in medical school, I would suggest rethinking that idea because medical school definitely requires a lot and the majority of your time. So just think of medical school as a full-time job. So you're going to be dedicating 8 to 12 hours of your time every single day to go to class or to study. Now you're probably wondering how I recommend that you guys study in medical school because it is significantly different than undergrad and you're definitely going to have to change up the way you guys study. So everybody has different study techniques. Everybody learns a little bit differently. Some people are more visual. Some people need to write things down. Some people need to do repetition or use flashcards. And so it's really important that you guys figure out how you best learn. But if you were to ask me like what's a good solid way of studying in medical school, you can never go wrong with repetition. So re-watching lectures, going over your lecture slides as much as you can, making flashcards and just repeating them, doing repetition, repetition, repetition. Um, that is ultimately the best way to study in medical school. And like I've seen in a lot of similar videos, medical school isn't hard in the sense that the topics are extremely complex and you're not gonna understand them. There are some more complex topics like neuro, which makes neuro a very difficult block for the majority of medical students. But you guys can expect to just get a lot of information. It might not be very complex or difficult to understand, there's just going to be a lot of it and it's just going to keep coming and keep coming and keep coming. And it's going to be important for you guys to know one thing in order to know the next thing. So everything kind of builds on itself. So now that you guys are in medical school, unfortunately, you can't just remember stuff, take the test and then dump it from your mind because it's definitely going to come back, whether that's in a different block and on a different exam or ultimately on your boards. So it's so important to just do repetition, try and remember as much stuff as possible. I know it's very easier said than done. And I know, you know, myself personally, it's so difficult to remember everything but you just gotta kinda do your best and don't be super hard on yourself. So with that being said, another great tip is to not be hard on yourself, okay? The majority of you are very much overachievers and you've been that way for a while now and you kinda have to be that way in order to get into medical school. You guys have to do so much additional stuff to just normal, you know, undergraduate students in order to get into medical school that you guys start getting into this overachiever mentality. And 
that can be very good and it can also be very detrimental to your mental health, which is why a lot of medical schools have gone to a more pass-fail type of system, including boards are now pass-fail for step one. So one of the reasons that they're doing that is because medical students are very hard on themselves and they produce so much anxiety and stress in their lives that it's just not healthy. So a big piece of advice that I can give you guys is to give yourselves a break once in a while. You don't have to get A's on all of your medical school exams. You don't have to be the best all the time. There's gonna be blocks in medical school that you do extremely well on, and then there's gonna be blocks where you don't do very well on, and that's completely normal because you have strengths and you also have weaknesses. And if you guys can acknowledge your weaknesses and accept them and you know just try and work on them, that's all that anybody's gonna ask of you. So medical school can be very stressful, but it's all about your mindset. So have a positive mindset and don't beat yourself up if you don't do as well as somebody else. Because like I said, everybody has strengths and weaknesses. And if you can acknowledge that now, you're gonna have such a more enjoyable time during medical school. Now, another question that is commonly asked is, do medical students have free time? Is there time to do other stuff besides studying and going to school and going to lab? And the answer to this question is yes. And it's highly encouraged that you guys do extracurricular activities, that you guys make time for yourselves, that you make time for your families and your spouses. Medical school is just one piece of your life and you need to have balance in your life. So you cannot always be studying. Otherwise, you really aren't going to retain that material very well. So breaks are extremely, extremely important in medical school. Many of you guys know what the Pomodoro technique is and you need to use that in your actual life as well. You can't just study for six hours and not take breaks. So. You need to study and be dedicated when you need to be, but then when it's time to take a break and enjoy time with friends and family, it's important to dedicate that time to friends and family. And I promise you guys, it might seem like you're wasting time when you're actually you know, out grocery shopping or hanging out with your spouse or taking your dog on a walk, but in reality, it's doing wonders to your mental health and ultimately, it's gonna make you guys be more efficient during the times that you're actually studying. So another very commonly asked question for students entering medical school is, what's the hardest block or body system or topic that you're gonna cover in medical school? And this isn't a very easy question to answer because everybody has you know, different strengths and weaknesses like we talked about. But I think the majority of people really struggle with neuro and it's just because neuro is a very complex topic like I mentioned previously. And I think neuro hits you from two different fronts. So you get a very complex topic, but then you're also getting a lot of information that maybe isn't as complex. So you're having to memorize a lot of different things but then you have these topics within the sphere of neuro that are very complex that you have never heard of before. And you have to try and manipulate this information to make it stick in your mind. And so one of the more complex topics are called nerve tracks. And so that's basically how the nerves, like in your arms, legs, fingers, all of that stuff, goes into your spinal cord up the spinal cord into the brain stem and then into the brain. And so there is so many different pathways and these nerve fibers cross at different areas, whether it's in the spinal cord or the brain stem or even in the brain itself, that it makes it a very complex topic. The other issue with neuro is it's not something that you guys can really see because nerve pathways in the spinal cord and in the brain are not visible to, I guess, the naked eye. Not that like you can really see it on a microscope as far as I know. It's kind of like you just have to have faith that it's there and that it's working. The one thing that we do know with neuro is when it's dysfunctional. So if you guys have a defect or a tumor pressing on a certain part of the spinal cord, 
you can almost guess what the defects are gonna be in the rest of the body. But you guys are gonna learn all about that in medical school, so I won't spoil the rest of neuro for you guys. Some other more difficult topics that people have issues with is um, like cardiopulmonary, so stuff with the heart, like EKGs, and how the lungs work with the different pressures. And then there's another one that I'm not sure how many medical schools um, teach this, but it's kind of like your biochemistry immunology block. Um, a lot of people have never taken immunology and it can be very difficult at first, but trust me, just give it some time, do a lot of different repetition and you guys will be able to understand it a little bit better. I think one of the last topics I wanna cover in this video are loans and kind of like money and finances. I'm not gonna dive too deep into this topic. I just wanna kind of ease your guys' minds about loans because everybody needs to take out loans. And so you're not alone in this. Wow, that was funny, loans and a loan. That's interesting. <laughs> but like I said, everybody takes out loans. And so it might feel weird that you're seeing that you're $100,000, $200,000 in debt at first. But just know that everybody that is a doctor now, everybody that's a resident, everybody that's in medical school is in that same boat, whether they have only $100,000 in debt or $500,000 in debt. Like we all are in debt unless you have like a full ride scholarship, which is very few medical students. So let's just disregard that for right now. But I'm sure a lot of you guys have different ways to save money. And if you guys don't, I can totally make another video on how to save money in medical school. So just let me know down in the comments if that's something that you guys would be interested in me talking about. But yeah, loans can be extremely scary for somebody starting out in medical school, you know, seeing that amount of money. And basically the way loans work is you fill out a FAFSA form, you put in like your school's code, and then the school is gonna send, you know, the government how much your tuition is and how much it costs for living expenses and stuff like that. And then the government's ultimately going to approve a certain amount that your school has requested for every single student and then you guys are going to have access to that money and so you don't have to take all of the money that they're giving you and I highly recommend that you guys don't but basically you'll say okay like my tuition this semester so this semester not year is $25,000, let's say. And so you'll need to take at least $25,000 out, but if you need to like pay rent and stuff, then maybe take out $35,000, which can possibly cover your rent and maybe like your food and gas and just other living expenses. And so basically what will happen after that, once you approve a final amount, is the money is gonna be sent to the school. The school is gonna take the amount that they're owed for the tuition from you and then they're going to send the rest of that to your bank account. So that's how loans work. And so just keep in mind guys that I'm not like a financial professional and this isn't financial advice. This is just helping you guys kind of figure out your way during your first year of medical school, kind of easing your guys' mind. And I know I had questions about loans and stuff when I was starting out medical school. And so I hope that this little like explanation of kind of how loans work and how they actually end up in your bank account was helpful. So if you guys have any questions about going into medical school, kind of what to expect, feel free to drop those in the comments and I will be sure to get back to you guys. But with that being said, guys, I'll end the video here, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.